Hey everybody, welcome back. Today we're talking about data structures and specifically we're talking about linked lists. This is definitely a great topic for beginners, but it's also a topic that occasionally I see seniors struggling with. It happens all the time. I'll be in my office, we'll be talking about a piece of code for a project that I've assigned. And at some point they'll say, actually, you know, I'm not really that comfortable with linked lists still. And the conversations that inevitably follow that revelation have inspired this video. So here's the plan. In this video, I wanna conceptually talk about linked lists, what they are and how they work. I'm also gonna show you how to implement them and maybe we'll get to talk about some of the things that people sometimes get wrong with linked lists. In most of my videos, we focus on C. You're definitely gonna get a healthy dose of C in this video, but I'm also gonna show you, because it's a really general topic, I wanna show you how linked lists can be implemented in another language, specifically in object-oriented languages like Java, because I want you to see it in a few different forms. So linked lists are data structures. They're a way to store data, store different elements of data that you want to keep track of, and they have some nice properties. Now, for those of you that are brand new to C, you haven't really programmed before, you're just barely getting started, I encourage you to first go look at my beginner C videos if you haven't yet. They'll give you some background information about some things that I'm going to assume that you understand. And so pause this video, go watch those videos, and then come back. I'll link to it in the description. So now that you've done that, let's talk about storing data. Up until now, when you've wanted to store data, you've probably declared a variable. You've declared an int, or a float, or a double, or a character, or, hey, if you want to get fancy and get some more structured data, maybe you made a struct and you can aggregate some data together. And if you had a list of things that you wanted to keep track of, you probably made an array. And arrays are really simple. They're just a fixed size list of something, of anything, of numbers, of pointers, of structs, whatever you need. You just declare an array and it gives you a big block of them. And this C code right here will give me an array of five ints. And that basically tells the compiler, hey, you need to allocate enough space for five integers right next to each other. In this case, that's 20 bytes, five times four for each int. And that's my array. And I can put stuff into the array, like uh, element two, I can set to 45. I can also read stuff out of the array, but arrays do have some downsides. What if I realize that five wasn't enough? What if I end up needing seven ints in my list? Well, I do have some options. The first is at the beginning when I first start up my program, I could just make the array big enough that it will hold whatever number of elements I could possibly ever have. Now this could be really wasteful, especially if most of the time my list is pretty short, but occasionally it might grow really huge. Then I have to start out with a huge array regardless of the fact that most of the time I'm not going to need all that memory. So my second option is I can allocate the array on the heap using malloc, just like this. This is gonna give me room for 10 ints. Now let's say that down the road, I end up needing it to grow. I need it to get bigger. I can just use realloc to resize it, in this case to 20,000 ints. And so this code is going to make the array big enough for 20,000 ints and those original 10 that I had will be preserved. Whatever I stored in there will still be at the front, the first 10 of that bigger array. And that's really cool, but it can be a little bit slow if you do this all the time. Because as my array gets bigger, realloc may have to actually move it someplace else. So there may be copying. And if I have big arrays that are getting moved around, a lot of copying, that's gonna be inefficient. Sometimes that's a problem, sometimes it's not. Now let's say that I have an array and I wanna insert something into the middle of that array. Inserting at the end is super easy. Inserting in the middle is a little more complicated because all of these things here at the bottom, I have to move down. I have to copy them so that I can make room for the new element to get stuck in right here. So again, that means more copying and moving things around. And in certain cases, especially if you're doing this a lot or your array gets really big, this can be very inefficient. And deleting something from the middle of the array can also be problematic. And ladies and gentlemen, that is where linked lists come in. They give us a way to keep a list of data where we can insert and delete wherever we want and without a lot of copying. Now, the idea of a linked list is really quite simple. We just are going to basically find the things that we want to, to list, you know, the, the elements that we want. These could be numbers, these could be whatever. And we simply link them up and we have a list, right? We give them, we, we just, basically provide a linkage from one element to the other, okay? And while this is really easy with magnetic things, in code what this essentially means is I'm going to allocate memory for each element that I want to add to the list, and I'm also going to give it a pointer that's going to point to the next item in the list. So if I have a linked list of integers, it might look something like this. I could have 32 followed by eight, followed by 45. Each of these integers are elements in my list. Each of these boxes we call nodes. That's just what they're called. And the arrows in between boxes we're going to call edges or next pointers. And we also typically need to know where our list starts. So we need to keep some kind of marker that tells us where the list begins. Programmers typically call this the head of the list. 
So terminology lists have nodes, lists have edges or next pointers, and lists have heads. Some lists also have tails if you want to keep track of the end of the list. Now keep in mind that these elements can be located anywhere in memory. Now with arrays, they all had to be squashed together in one block, like all one after the other. In linked lists, we don't have that requirement. They can be anywhere in memory and we're simply going to link them up using next pointers. So the nodes could be anywhere and it really doesn't matter. And that's why linked lists are so awesome. Say I want to add another element to my list. Let's say it's another number. Let's say it's number one. Super easy. I can just add it anywhere I want. All I have to do is allocate space for that element and then just link it wherever I want. I basically just adjust the arrows or the next pointers so that the order we want is preserved. And now it's part of the list. If I want to add it to the front of the list, all I have to do is add its next pointer to point to the current head of the list. And then I take the head and point it to the new node that I just inserted. Now it's at the head of the list. If I want to add it to the middle, we just adjust the edges. We take the new node we want to insert, we point its next pointer to point to the node that we want to come after that element, and then we take the node that we want to come before the element and we point its next pointer to the new node, and we're done. It's part of the list, right where we want it, easy peasy. But before we get too cocky, let's actually write some code. Let's see if we can make this actually work in a program. Let's jump into C. Our node in our linked list is probably going to be a struct. In C++ or Java, it might be a class. And to keep things simple, I'm going to store a number in my struct. Of course, you can adapt this code to store whatever you want in here. And I'm going to add a next pointer. This is going to point to the next node in the list. And I really don't want to keep typing struct all the time, so I'm going to type def struct node to be node underscore t. It's just going to make my code a little cleaner, and I'm going to do a little less typing. Okay, so now I have a struct that represents my nodes. How do I make it into a list? Well, let's start with the scenario we had before. Let's make three nodes. I'm just going to declare them as local variables for now. We're probably going to change that later. And we'll set their values. And then let's link them up into a list. And just for kicks, we'll make the third one the front of the list, followed by the second, followed by the first. I could put them in any order. This is just completely arbitrary. And we'll make the head point to the address of N3. That's what the ampersand means if you haven't seen it yet. Then we set each node's next pointer to the address of the next node, and we need to know where the list stops. So we'll set the next pointer for the last node to be null. And now we have a list, and let's add a function that prints out a linked list if we pass in a head. And this is easy. We're basically, we're gonna pass in the head pointer. That tells us where to start. And then we're just going to declare a temporary pointer. I'll call it temporary so we don't forget that it's temporary, and set it to start at the head pointer. Then we just follow the links. As long as the temporary pointer isn't null yet, meaning we haven't hit the end yet, we're going to print out the value of the node the temporary points to, and then we'll move temporary to point to the next node in the list. That pointer is just bouncing along down the list, printing each node that it finds. And finally, we hit the end, and I print a new line just for the sake of pretty formatting. Okay, so now let's call our function down in main with the list we created. And we compile it, and we run it, and it works. Okay, now this is a good time to stop and play around a bit. Because we can quickly reorder our list, and we compile it, and run it, and... And look, now it prints out the new ordering. Okay, and we can add a new node to the list, and let's insert it in the middle, of course. And if we compile it, and run it, you notice that the node is there, right there in the middle? And I can remove the first node by just moving the head pointer down a link. So hopefully you're following along. Make sure this all makes sense. Uh, move stuff around, insert stuff, delete stuff. Just make sure you've got your bearings before we move on. Even if it means pausing this video, I know you're enjoying it. But pause it and go back and make sure that everything I've set up to this point actually makes sense to you. I just want to make sure you've got this before I move on. Okay, let's move on. So what do we like about linked lists so far? Inserting elements and deleting elements is super easy. Also, going through the list and printing out the elements, that's super easy. But I want to make some changes to my code to make things a little cleaner. Because this code isn't normally how we do things. We don't normally declare a bunch of nodes and then link them up, though we clearly can, just like I showed you here. But usually, we use linked lists when we don't know how many nodes we're going to need. And we want a list that's going to grow to whatever size the list needs to be. And that usually doesn't mean a few statically allocated nodes like this. Instead, we usually dynamically allocate our nodes on the heap by using malloc, something like this. Now I have two statically allocated nodes and one on the heap. Eh, but this is getting a bit messy, so let's change things up and make a function that creates new nodes for us. We'll have it return a node underscore t pointer. That's going to be a pointer to the new node and take an integer argument. And inside the function, we will allocate a new node using malloc. And we're going to set its value. And just for sanity's sake, let's initialize the next pointer to be null and return the pointer to the new node. 
Okay, now we can change up the main function a bit. Let's remove our statically allocated nodes and just use one pointer. And our new function will allocate new nodes and add them to the front of the list. And we can compile and run and you see we still have a fully working list. Now, one thing to notice here is that we're basically doing the same thing each time. We create a new node, we set its next pointer to point to the head, which is the front of the list, and then we set the head to point to the new node, which is the front of the list. It's the new front of the list. Now, that's easy enough. Now, let's say we want to make a bunch of nodes, though. And so to, to do this, I'm going to change things up and make a loop that creates a bunch of nodes. For simplicity, I will just add the numbers from 0 to 24. And we compile it, and it runs, and notice that the numbers are in reverse order. Why? Well, it's because I added each number to the front of the list each time. So the last number I added, that 24, is at the front of the list. It's the last one that got added. And this, again, is a good place to stop and make sure that everything makes sense. And I know that some of you up to this point in your education have wondered what use pointers are anyway other than frustrating students. Well, this is one place where pointers are a huge benefit, and I hope you're starting to see that. They make this whole linking the nodes together thing possible, and they also allow us to keep track of all of these nodes without having variables for each of them, because they're all linked together. So they're just, they're, we keep track of them indirectly through the pointer linkages. Okay, so where do we go from here? Well, one thing that most people do is to make some functions for common things that you want to do with your list. And for this example, I want to make a few. First, let's make a function that's going to do what we've been doing all along and add a node to the head of the list. So now I could do this a few ways. For starters, let's just take two arguments, the head of the list and a pointer to the new node that I want to add. And we'll do just what we did in our loop. We point the new node's next pointer to head, and then we return the address of the new node, which will become our new head pointer. And now with this function, now down in our loop, we can simplify things a bit. Keep in mind that our function doesn't change the head. So we actually have to set the head to the new pointer that the function returns, but that's still pretty simple. So let's compile it and, okay, so that works. Now let's say that I don't want to have to assign the new head myself. We can change things a little bit like this. And what I want to do is to pass in a pointer to a pointer, and this allows us to change the head pointer, and we can now update it inside the function. And that simplifies main a bit more. And so now if we compile it and run it, it still works. Okay, so let's add some more functions. Let's make a function that finds a node. Once you have a list, at some point you're going to want to see what's inside that list. And this function is a lot like the function we use to print out our list, but instead of printing the elements, it's just going to go through until it finds the one we're looking for. And if it does, it returns a pointer to that node. If it doesn't find it, then it returns null. Now we can go back down to main, and now let's tell it to find lucky number 13. And just to make sure it works, let's print out the value of the node it returns. And we'll compile it, and we'll run it. And look, we found number 13, and that's great. And so now what if we didn't want to always insert at the front of the list? Say we wanted to insert a node after another node in the list. Well, we can make a function to do that too. And we just set the new node's next pointer to point to whatever the previous node's next pointer points to, and then set that node's next pointer to point to the new node. So just to make sure this works, let's insert a new node, node 75 down here after 13. and we'll compile and run, and there you go. 75 now follows 13. Note that the order is very important here. What would happen if we had changed the pointers in the reverse order? Think through it for a minute. We would set the pointer in the list to point to the new node, but now we've lost its next pointer. So when we set the new node's next pointer, it's going to point back to itself. So we basically lost the tail end of our list and we have a loop in our list. And between you and me, loops in linked lists are almost never what the programmer had in mind. It's almost always a problem. You wanna see why? Okay, I'll satisfy your morbid curiosity. Let's do it. And yeah, things get really obnoxious because it's basically looping on itself. So we have a list that never ends. So we'll set it back. Just make sure when you're writing your own linked list code that you keep the order of operations in mind as you go. And of course, there are a lot more details we could talk about with linked lists. We could talk about access speeds, about how insert and delete are super fast, and how lookups aren't quite that fast because you have to hunt through each element of the list. And we could talk about doubly linked lists, and we could talk about queues, and we could talk about stacks, which are basically just linked lists' rowdy cousins. But I'm going to cover those in a future video. I just don't have the time to get to all of that today. With the time we do have left, I want to take a minute to show you what linked lists look like in a different language. Specifically, I want to look at Java for a minute. So the simplest way in Java to use linked lists is just to include java.util. And then create a new linked list object. 
add some integers. And then print them out. Yes, of course, I'm joking, but I just wanted you to see that linked lists are so common that a lot of languages like Java actually have them baked in. But of course, we want to see how it actually looks to implement them. But first, let's compile our example, and it does work. But of course, you know me, I'm all about helping you see what's really going on, and I don't like mysterious black boxes, so let's build our own. We're going to make another class called MyList. Now, inside MyList, I'm going to put a private class called Node. That's going to be my node. And just like we did in C, we give the node a value and a next pointer, except that Java doesn't have pointers, it has references, which are basically just pointers with training wheels or kitty locks on. Okay, so we'll use a reference to a node as our next. And of course, our list needs a head. And let's give it an add method. And for simplicity, we'll add each value as a new node at the head. and then we link things up just like we did in our C example. And then I need to rename my class so it matches the file names. Oh, Java, I just love your quirks. Now back to our main class, let's create one of our new linked lists, add some numbers to it and print it out. And of course, for that to work, my list is going to need a toString method so it knows how to print this thing out. Just like in C, we'll start at the head, and we're going to go through adding each value to the string. And then we're going to return the result when we're done. And we compile, or, or not. Okay, I forgot to make two string public, okay. And now we run it, and it still doesn't work, it just goes on forever. Hmm, is it the head? I thought Java set the head to null by default. Well, I guess we can be extra careful and, oh, okay, no, no, I see it, that's it. I forgot to move temp to the next node. <laughs> kind of a big deal. So my code's just spinning on the first element of my list forever. Okay, so now we compile it and run it and it works. And yes, the numbers are in reverse order since we're adding at the front. Just like we saw before, the default behavior for Java's built-in linked list class is to insert at the end. But I think this gives you a good idea of how the ideas that we just talked about in C translate into Java. And I think that's all the time I have for today. I hope that gives you a good introduction to linked lists. There's a lot more we can talk about and a lot more that I'm planning to talk about in future videos, so just stay tuned. There are more videos coming, especially if you want to hear about stacks and queues and doubly linked lists. And yeah, we're going to keep talking about data structures and we might even talk about trees or hash tables. It's going to be great. But until then, I will see you in my next video.